Did you know that in fly fishing, the taper of your fly line is going to play an absolutely massive role in how well your fly fishing setup is going to work for you. Today we're talking that, we're talking buying the perfect fly fishing outfit, and we're talking whether trout can smell sunscreen. It's coming up on today's episode of Fly Fishing University TV. It's Friday, welcome back to another episode. My name is Jordan Ulrich, and if you're brand new here, I just wanna say welcome, and I wanna say thank you for tuning in. Our purpose and mission with Fly Fish University is shortening your fly fishing learning curve and ultimately bringing you a better experience on the water. We're gonna give you the knowledge that you need, which is going to increase your confidence, which is going to make fly fishing a lot more fun. The more that you feel like you know what you're doing, the more enjoyable your experience on the water is without a doubt. Before we get started, okay, I'm usually excited every Friday, but today even more so. Today is the release of the Stillwater Fly Fishing Academy. This is a collaborative effort that my friend Phil Rowley and I have worked on over the past year an educational platform designed to specialize in teaching still water fly fishing. So if you like lake fishing, it's something that I've always really been a huge fan of. I love all different types of fishing, but still water for me is so much fun. You can go to stillwaterflyfishingacademy.com. We've got an awesome opening week sale, especially if chronomid fishing is something that is up your alley. I think that you're really gonna like it. So let's get into today's episode. Wade from Denver says, how important is the taper of the fly line? Wade, that is a great question because it is mission critical to know that the taper of the fly line and understanding the taper of the fly line that you're fishing and why you're fishing that taper is so important. I've shared this story many times where I had bought the, the first really nice fly rod I purchased. It was worth a decent amount of money but I couldn't cast it nearly as well as like the $100 entry level rod that I had. And I couldn't figure this out. And it was because the rod was way faster. The action was way faster than I was used to. And the line that I had put on it, the taper was way off. It was way, way off for it would not load the rod, which is why I couldn't cast any substantial distance with it. Boom, I put a brand new taper fly line on it, a little bit more grain weight in the front of the line. And oh my God, it transformed it overnight, right? So understanding things like you know the rear taper the belly the front taper of the line understanding how these play a part in how how this fly line is going to perform for you right understanding how do these play a part in the type of fishing that you're going to be doing right the taper of the fly line that you're going to be using if you're nymphing right or streamer fishing is going to be way different than the taper of the fly line that you're gonna be using for making soft, delicate presentations with dry flies. So Wade, something that I would, would say, and I think that we'll do a whole episode just around fly line taper, but it's a really, really important thing to know. If you want to learn more about fly line tapers, I would definitely say to join our free workshop on March 23rd, 24th, 25th, the Fly Fishing Accelerator Workshop, because in lesson one, that's exactly what we're gonna be covering is the importance of understanding the taper of the fly line. Okay, so I'll drop a link down below. I would love to have you there. It's absolutely free. It's a three night workshop, but this, Wade, you gotta know. What is the taper I'm fishing? Why am I fishing it? And what is my application? What's my, my purpose, my intention with this fly line? Your fly line can work against you and your fly line can work for you. We want it working in the ladder. Okay, Carson from Lewiston, Idaho, which is super cool because I used to go to Lewiston, Idaho every year for American Thanksgiving. Well, he says, can trout smell when there's something on your fly, such as sunscreen? I'm going to say absolutely yes, because you look at scent. Scent plays such a, a, a huge role in something like if somebody's bait fishing, right? Well, all they're really relying on, it's not like a chunk of power bait looks so incredible, but it has a very, very powerful, powerful scent to it. I know from uh, ashamed a little bit, but when I used to drift fish for steelhead with bait like sand shrimp or roe, you know, there is something to be said about the scent trail that comes off of fishing with something like that. So I would say on the other end of the spectrum, can it negatively affect it? 100% I think so. I think that, uh, you know, I've heard things like citrus, you know, orange peel, sunscreen, cigarette smoke. I know for sure I was fishing next to somebody, a friend of mine one time, same fly, same depth, 
same tippet, same everything. The only difference was he smoked cigarettes and I didn't, and we were catching a noticeably different amount of fish. But again, you know, I, I can't, uh, I don't have any scientific proof behind that. But what I can tell you is that if you think that there's something on your hands that is going to hinder the productivity of the fly that you're fishing, okay, or you don't want to get it on your fly or your leader, uh, there's a product that they used to carry, I don't know if they still do, but it was called an odor shark and it was made of Berkeley, made by Berkeley of all companies. And it basically was this little piece of metal that you would rub your hands on and what it would do is it would remove, it would neutralize the scent on your hands. Okay, another thing you could do would be like, wash them in the lake, like at the boat launch, like in, in the mud or something. But definitely I like to have pretty neutral. I don't like to, you know, douse my hands in, in spray on sunscreen and bug repellent and then go and tie my fly on. And lastly, Sam from Bend, Oregon says, I am just getting into the sport. Love your podcast. Thank you, Sam. Uh, if you could buy one setup for trout fishing, what would it be? Okay, so I'm going to assume that we are talking setup being like, what is the length and weight? What what would be nice dimensions to start with? I would say for sure that you're pretty a pretty run of the mill, very universal, uh, a very, very universal rod setup for trout fishing would be like a nine foot five weight or a nine foot six weight. Okay, as you get into some different applications, you might want shorter, longer, lighter, heavier, but for the most part, you know, a nine foot six weight is really gonna get you around pretty much any scenario that you're gonna come across uh, trout fishing on both still and moving water. Um, of course, there's so many areas in which we can make this more complicated, but Sam, I would just say that if you're starting out, most of these starter kits that you're gonna find are gonna be in that nine foot range in either, a, in either a five or a six weight. Usually starting with a full floating line, you can always add other lines to it, but floating lines, A, they're the most versatile, B, they're the easiest to cast, especially if you're learning to cast, don't, don't learn with like a type seven sinking line or something along those lines. So I just said lines twice. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. I hope that it was valuable to you and Again, if you want to check out the Stillwater Academy, I will leave a link down below. And if you want to join the Fly Fishing Accelerator Workshop, I will link, leave a link down below for that as well. Flyfishuniversity.com forward slash accelerator. We're gonna have a super good time. I wanna say thank you for tuning in and I will see you on Wednesday's episode. Have a great weekend.